So sometimes you're just trimming along, quite the thing, expecting nothing, and a cow walks in who's extremely lame, and her foot is absolutely full of stones. And that is the case here. This is the Hoof GP. So like I said in the intro, my name is Graham Parker and this is the Hoof GP. If you've never watched these videos before, here we look after cow's feet and teach you guys, even though you don't need to know or don't think you need to know, how to look after cow's feet yourself. And in this case, this cow is lame. I know she's lame because I saw her walking in. And now we've lifted her foot in the air. The problem is very obvious. Or at least you think it is because that's actually only one of her problems. She has a much bigger problem that you guys can't see right now, but I can. So clearly we need to clean this cow's foot off so you guys and I can see it much more clearly. But first, there's something much more important on the agenda. Craig, make us a coffee. Sure thing, Graham. That looks so rehearsed, doesn't it? But it actually wasn't. Here if they'll make us coffee. So look at that. I told you that the stones were the obvious problem and they are an obvious problem, but there's a much worse problem lurking in beneath. And if you look here, as I wash away, the stones actually begin to flick out themselves. Cow's feet are designed for handling stones. They're not usually causing a problem. Usually what happens is there's a problem there already. The stones get into that problem, that crack, that hole, that crevice, that hole, whatever you want to call it, and they exacerbate the problem. How good a word is that? Yeah, they make the problem worse. And in this case, that kind of is the case. But as you're just about to see, that's not what's causing the lameness. I can actually hear the stones, although I can't see them, I can hear them scratching against my knife. But I think that is about it. So there are a bunch of stones on the ground now and these ones here, and like I said, they're not actually causing the problem. This white powdery substance you can see here is called pith. That is natural shedding of the hoof. It's naturally drying out and flaking away, and that is what has caused this hole. It's actually completely natural, but there's a hole or a compartment or a crevice or a kind of indentation. I honestly do struggle with my words, I don't make that up. It's a hole that allows itself to be filled up with dirt, debris, and in this case, stones. And yes, it would have caused a problem if we hadn't sorted it right now. We're about to get rid of that crevice completely by trimming it, and then we'll get on with dealing with the problem that you guys probably haven't spotted yet. Here's a quick 360 of the foot to give you a bit more of a chance. If you've got any idea what the problem is, let me know in the comments below. And I love that comment if you get it right. Did you get it? Right, we're gonna trim it before answering that question. This cow really is lame, and lameness is very rarely caused by stones like that, compacted into the sole of a cow's hoof, which is why I knew instinctively to search for an alternative reason for her lameness. Although stones aren't usually the cause for lameness, when they're compacted like that, they can definitely make problems far worse than they would have been without the presence of those stones. And on some occasions, yes, those stones will penetrate through the sole of a cow's hoof and protrude into the corium, the delicate anatomy within a cow's hoof, which would bring on incredible lameness. But like I said, in this cow's instance, that is not the case. This part of the trim is called modelling out, and for this particular cow, it's going to be incredibly crucial if we want to make her any more comfortable than she currently is. I wasn't expecting that, to be totally honest. This is the start of an ulcer. All of this bruising in here is bleeding of the corium underneath. It's seeping through the cow's foot and resulting in what you can see right here. But still, that is not the problem that I've been quizzing you on. This, however, is. If we open up her feet, you can see a huge growth right up in between those toes, which seriously cannot be comfortable. It's difficult to see, but if I wiggle my finger here, you can see that growth. And every time she steps, it's being squished. 
and stood on. Imagine standing on your finger every time you take a step. That is exactly what is happening with this cow. But obviously I can't cut it away. I've told you that before. It's not my job to cut into live tissue. That is the job of a vet. And actually she doesn't even need it. There is something else we can do about it. What we can do is we can clear out this interdigital space. We can allow more space for this growth to be squished and contorted in between the feet. So this isn't a 100% long-term fix, but as the hoof's growing, it'll start to close in on it again and it will become a problem. Ideally, we would wave a magical wand and get rid of that growth. But unfortunately, I don't have my wand with me today. So spacing out this interdigital space as carefully as we can is our best and actually our only option. I really want to carve away as much of this as I possibly can, but I also need to get the weight away from this area to stop this ulcer from getting any worse. This is the axial wall that I'm carving away at. It's also wall horn, so it is also incredibly hard stuff. She needs it for architectural support. So if I take too much of it away, it'll be a problem. So I need to keep that in mind all the while, trying to make space for this huge growth. That growth was already allowing that reddish fluid you can see that we all know and love to seep out of it when we first picked it up. And washing it is actually enough to make it slightly worse. Right, I'm going to lower this heel to take a bit of weight away from this claw because it's bearing too much weight and that's why all of this bruising is here. Uh, it looks like tatty peels or potato peelings if we said it correctly. You can actually see that much clearer now if we open up that interdigital space. And if we come right down here, you can see we've made much more squish space to hopefully relieve her pain. You haven't mixed it right. You like it lumpy? I like it lumpy, he says. There are two things in life that I don't like lumpy. One is coffee and the other is a fart. Never trust a lumpy fart. We'll try to decide if we leave that in or not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it in. It's good informational content, isn't it? So I'm not just wasting time and around. I'm only having this coffee and talking to you guys while this block dries. The important thing isn't the video, it's the cow and the crush. And with that, this glue is dry and she is good to go. She's clearly still feeling it. The growth is still there. That growth's proper name, by the way, is a tyloma. You've been watching the GP.